Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. Wherever you are in the world, we are thrilled to have you here with us today. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm the president, founder, and chief listening officer here at our network. Our show today is The Wise Ones, and we're going to be exploring the term push as well as perseverance, giving it a whole new meaning with our extra super special guest who is joining us backstage before we bring her out let's welcome the star of our show this gentleman is such an incredible influence in my life he has helped me tremendously with my health he's helped me with my books he's helped me with production he is just one of those people that you meet in your life and becomes an integral part a mentor and a friend his name is red Laughlin. let's welcome him Hello. Howdy, Dr. Jacqueline. Always good to see you. You look stunning today, by the way. I love those earrings. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're looking well as well. And I really enjoy sharing this opportunity with you because you bring the most incredible people to this program. And today is no exception. Before we bring out Sabine, I'd love for you to share with our audience who's joining for the first time, whether they're listening or watching, a little bit about your background and why it is that you do this program with me. Well, the reason I do the program with me because you asked me to, and I just feel you know, I, I needed to accept that opportunity. Regardless, we have some wonderful people. A little bit about me, uh, retired military, 31 years. Uh, I said, I do to the Navy on a Sunday afternoon. I said, I do to my wife the following Wednesday, uh, 31 years with the military, 54 years now with my wife. Uh, I fell in love with chemistry as a sophomore in, in high school, got a degree in it, immediately got an invitation to Vietnam, never practiced it until my wife came down with uh, cancer a few years ago. Then I started researching, diving, delving into the human body at the cellular level, chemically speaking. I look for cause and effect relationships. Treat a cause, fix a problem. Treat a symptom, you'll always be treating symptoms. So that's what I that's what I love to do for a living. I write about it all the time. I have almost a thousand articles on LinkedIn, all original content. And most of those things are all oriented toward health and wellness, mostly toward longevity. What are the things we can do to protect our age, uh, minimize age-related disease? Uh, the show immediately following this on the USA Global TV and radio network is called Talking Heads. Uh, Talking Heads is a show where I talk about health and wellness, primarily things that affect us on a regular basis. We're doing a six-part series right now on brain health and mental illness. And today, I believe, will be number four out of six. We'll be talking about some of the more common mental illnesses, the causes, uh, the treatment symptoms, and things like that. And then uh, the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll wrap that up. Uh, I don't believe there's going to be a show. I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a show on Thanksgiving Day. So we'll see you again in two weeks. But sometimes the stars align in such a way that you can't figure out why they happen that way. Uh, as a networker, I'm on a bunch of different platforms on a regular basis. Uh, come back to them here, there, and yonder. Uh, I was on a brand new one here oh, less than 10 days ago, I think. And the breakout room, we went from 50 down to six or something like that. And one of the people in my breakout session is our guest today, Sabine Becker. And Sabine uh, was talking about, you know, she did anybody know a ghostwriter? You know, she's thinking about doing that. And, and so we got to talking and I said, Sabine, contact me afterwards. I might be able to help you. And so we spent a little bit of time uh, chatting back and forth here, there and yonder. And then the person that we had scheduled automatically for today had to cancel last minute uh, family emergency. I don't know exactly what it was, but regardless, I called up Sabine. I said, Sabine, are you available today? And she says, absolutely. And she has such a an interesting career that you you're not gonna, you're literally almost not going to believe it. So, without further ado, I am bringing and introducing Sabine Becker to uh, the talking. Uh, no, not the talking. The wise ones. Welcome, Sabine. So nice to have you here today. Hello, 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 Jacqueline. Hello, Red. Good to see both of you. Awesome to be here. I'm so stoked about this. 
we're so excited to have you share your story. And Red, thank you for sharing how the two of you connected. I think it's so interesting. You get an opportunity to do some networking and then people have to fall off things come and you stay till the end. And you have this incredible moment with somebody that you might not have met otherwise. So Sabine, I read about your story. It is one that I have never heard before in my entire life. You're here with your beautiful face, smiling, filled with great energy. Tell us a little bit about the backstory, because I think people are going to be shocked if they don't know your story already. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was born in Germany, as you can hear from my accent, but I also was born with a challenge. And you could say that's a big challenge because due to the drug thalidomide, I was born with very, very small arms. Let me adjust the monitor a little bit. And my arms are very small. And the drug thalidomide at the time was given in the late uh, uh, late 50s, early 60s, was given to mothers who complained about morning sickness. But little did they know that this would cause de deformities nobody ever really has seen. 20,000 babies were born with deformities like myself. And that my life started with very, very little hope because 60% of the thalidomide babies died. They didn't even see that first birthday. So you could say I'm a survivor and I've always been a tough survivor and I survived so far. And I had to, to really work very hard to, to have a regular life. And my parents, they're both Germans uh, and especially my mother, she has been really one of those Germans with, with, that are really tough, tough, uh, tough woman, my mother. And she told me, Sabine, yes, you have very little arms. It will make your life a little bit harder, but you are going to learn how to use your feet for all daily tasks. And she did not stop until she found now remember, this was in Germany, post-war, post-war Germany. She did not stop until she found one physical um, therapist and one occupational therapist who had the ability to teach me how to use my feet for all daily tasks. You know, I really want your listeners and viewers to stop for one moment. Imagine you would have your hands tied behind your back. And then you have to figure out how to get dressed, how to brush your hair for the ladies, how to put makeup on, and how even to drive a non-modified car. I really would like to stop just for a few seconds so your listeners can really imagine this. And so I had to learn this the hard way and like, any other child, I suppose, I really, I was complaining about it because I was wanted to go out with kids who were, were in the play yard and had fun, but I had to go to physical and occupational therapies for several years, I think four or five years. I don't remember the timeline anymore that much because I was so small, but eventually I was able to be fully independent by using my feet. Where did you live in Germany? I was born in Berlin, and okay. then my parents, due to my father's work, uh, we moved to close to Frankfurt. There are some beautiful mountains close to Frankfurt, and that's why where where I grew up. And it was uh, really a good upbringing because what I got from my parents was the push mindset, and I'm still having that push mindset uh, today. Push persevere until success happens. And I've learned to make, uh, to reframe adversities into meaningful opportunities. And I'm a, a professional speaker and I'm also a coach. That's what I'm encouraging my audience to do. Think about your adversity. And this is just life. You know, we all are eventually going to have adversity in our lives, how can we reframe this in, in meaningful opportunities? Because if you think about it, 
I, and I dislike, I immensely dislike this word, but I and the 20,000 other babies that were born like me, we were victims. And I really don't like using that word, but we were victims of pharmaceutical grief and pharmaceutical negligence. However, we had, many of us were able to turn our lives around and really make a difference in other people's lives. And I was always encouraged right when I was a child to not feel sorry for myself. When I remember when I was a very small child, I said, oh, I can't, I can't do this. Anybody who ever has known my mother <laughs> would can imagine how she said, that's not true, Sabine, you, of course you can do it. Just try harder, just try to do it a different way. Find ways to accomplish the things you want to accomplish in life. So between my tough, tough mother and my father, who was a big, big loving teddy bear, I really had a wonderful upbringing. Are you a tough mother also? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> no. No, I was a marshmallow mother. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you were even though you were born in Berlin, you are you are not a Berliner. Because that's a No, Japanese. not really, not really, not really. I left Germany in 1979, so that was a while back. <laughs> and I studied in Paris, France uh, for seven years. And then my my husband died of a brain aneurysm. And uh, so there I was, a single mother. And um, let's back up. I had my son in 1983. And that was, I can tell you, that was a really tough one because I think every mother is apprehensive when they really get pregnant, think about, oh my gosh, how I'm going to do this with this baby. And I was super apprehensive how am I going to hold this baby? How am I going to feed my son? How am I going to dress him? So I really had to think about how to do things very differently. But in 1983, in October 1983, my son was born and I just had to do it. I just, you know, I there was this little tiny, tiny person and I had to take care of him, and I did everything with my feet. I changed his diapers with my feet. I bathed him. I dressed him. I fed him with my feet. I did everything. And today, my son, and yes, I was a marshmallow mom. <laughs> I don't know why I became a marshmallow mom. But today, my son is almost 40 years old, and he has chosen to go into the military. <laughs> <laughs> was very, very structured, and he always calls me my hippie mom. So I was kind of a hippie <laughs> mom. <laughs> Just ask my son. It's like, oh, yeah, my mom, the hippie. <laughs> um, um, but, Sabine, but, thank you so much for, for sharing your story, and it's so different to actually hear it from you as opposed to read it. The question I have for you is, our platform is about education, inspiration, and hope. And yeah. we know that as children, we see the world wide-eyed with curiosity. And then somebody comes along and puts us in our place and tells us, don't do that and go over there and don't talk to him. And she's different and he's different. And I'm my question I have for you, and, and it's really to try to help people out there who are living in that kind of mindset, is how did you deal with the fact that people saw you differently possibly than they saw themselves? And how did that make you feel? Excellent question. You know, because I did not think of myself as different to this day, and I'm 60 years old, to this day, I don't see myself as disabled. I mean, visually, sure, my arms look uh, different, but I don't really see that. I have learned from a very small child on uh, the passion for the possible. I always had such a passion to find things out. And that's why I did not see myself as different because my parents have given me the opportunity to lead a regular, normal life. I mean, as normal as you can lead a life with physical and occupational therapy. 
but I learned how to roller skate, I learned how to ski, I learned how to swim. I what else did I do? I mean, I, I even climbed a tree. Oh my gosh, yes, with my tiny little arms, I still climbed trees. And so the people who saw me in my life, because I didn't think of myself as disabled, they didn't think about themselves disabled. So I really had very, very, very few times um, the the feeling that I was different at all. And people didn't treat me different. They treated me as a regular little child. And I went to regular schools. I had to do everything, just every kid. So uh, and to, to, to the age of 13, I do believe, I wanted to imagine this. I wanted to become a flight attendant. So, because I love flying, yeah, exactly. And you, I, I'm laughing today about it. Uh, a flight attendant, because I loved flying. So, because my parents told me I can do anything I want to, why not flight attendant? It didn't occur to me that maybe in that incident, you do need arms. But I was, I so believed that I can do anything and everything because I just have, uh, to this day, I have that passion for making things possible. So I never encountered anybody who who, who was teasing me or, um, you know, pointing out my difference. So that's um, because I always believed in myself. Thank Why you so you much for me? answering that. I, I, I just, sorry, Red, I just feel like that's so important in the world we live in today. There's so much judgment. And if we mm -hmm. have a community of people who really believe in us and we believe in ourselves, there's nothing that we can't overcome. Mm -hmm. You're proof of it. Mm -hmm. And so you went through all of these things and then something else happened. Some major situation happened in your life. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, that that was major and that was massive. So uh, 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago, I was driving in northern New Mexico in a very remote area of uh, north of Santa Fe. And I say remote because it was remote and that played a part in the severity of what happened. I was driving along on a mountain road in northern New Mexico and suddenly what I saw was not a straight road ahead of me. Uh, it was curving and spinning around, and it was the, the colors changed, orange, yellow, red. And I still remember, oh, this is really bizarre. What, what's happening? What's happening? Am I in some sort of strange nightmare? And I really was trapped in a nightmare because I had a massive stroke while driving my car in a very remote area. And I actually passed out. And the, the only reason why I survived was that I had a passenger that day who did not panic, who grabbed the steering wheel in the absolute last second. Otherwise, we would have crashed into the Rio Grande River. And probably both of us wouldn't be here today. And it was a massive stroke. The reason why it was so massive was because the it, the area was so remote uh, it was three four hours away from from albuquerque it, there was no cell phone reception there was nothing there was hardly anybody there but you know thankfully um off-duty cop came along who radioed in to get the life flight uh, to pick me up and uh, three hours later i finally landed in albuquerque new mexico three hours after the stroke but a lot of the damage was done in my brain. And when I woke up in the neurointensive care unit you know, where I spent 10 days, which is really very long for that kind of uh, intensive care, I, I realized somehow I cannot walk, I cannot speak, I cannot use my left foot when my left foot is, is my main foot where I dress myself, where I brush my hair, where I put makeup on, and I do everything with my left foot, and my left foot was just frozen uh, in time. The toes did not move. So I really realized how absolutely bad it was. I mean, this was bad, and I realized that. But I something I also realized was that I had to have hope. And hope is so important 
when we are confronted with adversity and we all have adversity, it doesn't need to be a major disability or a major illness. There's so, there's so much adversity today. And it really would be so easy to, to think, oh my gosh, this is not going to work and why me? And this can't happen, happen anymore. How am I going to do things? But I do believe that everybody in, in, inside themselves has the opportunity and ability to rebuild their lives. Uh, no matter what the adversity is, no matter what your origin is or your education, we all have it inside of ourselves to start slowly, slowly rebuilding li our lives by first finding hope. And then we can take the slow steps to rebuild our lives. And I had uh, almost, almost to the day, 365 days of rebuilding to do. I was for 360 days, I think, a physical rehabilitation uh, therapy and occupational therapy and speech therapy. The speech therapy took a little bit longer than uh, it was over a year. And so I could learn how to speak again because I knew this is a computer, this is a person, but the, the connection between my brain and my words coming out of my mouth, it was just not there. So we had to use neuroplasticity, rebuild my brain. And that, I tell you, yeah, that took push, persevere until success happens. And I really do believe it's inside of everybody. Absolutely. Oh, applause. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much. That's just, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> you know, you I'm know, laughing today, but I, excuse me, but I really believe there was a reason for this. Um, I'm a believer. Uh, and there was a reason for this, for me to go through this. And I really believe, and I'm so grateful that I have received a second chance and I want to give back. I want people, I want to help people to discover their passion for the possible. And before the stroke, um, yeah, of course, I mean, uh, I learned a few lessons before, but the stroke really taught me what it does mean to have to push on life. Sabine, I really appreciate you again. I'm wondering, just as a follow-up question, many times in our lives, I have ulcerative colitis, I have three autoimmune diseases. Yeah. I only bring it up because I found that sometimes I'm out of alignment. And when I'm out of alignment, then the disease flares or, or things happen. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. if you think back to that stroke, was your life out of alignment in some way? Or can you actually pinpoint anything that caused the stroke to happen or just that's just something that happened you know i, I really love that question i have thought about that quite a bit because doctors did not find anything i mean i didn't have uh, you know high blood pressure heart problems um blood problems i didn't have all of that so they were speechless that somebody i'm not overweight i exercise i eat right so there, there was really a big surprise that this kind of a stroke happened to me. Was my life out of alignment? I was looking forward to moving to, to, to California uh, because I was in New Mexico, north of Santa Fe. That's where we lived at the time. So I was really looking forward to California, to living in San Diego. So I do not know, uh, I don't think that my life was out, out of alignment. So I really don't have any answers for you on that one. But believe me, I thought about it. Well, thank you so much. And again, I just asked because we want to inspire yeah. people and get people to think about their own lives and, and what they're doing. So, Red, over to you. Before the stroke, what were you in any kind of inspirational speaking, motivational speaking, or did this something happen after the stroke? And was the stroke actually more impetus to... to to show that inspiration of, of hope and perseverance? Yes, absolutely. I, I spoke since 1994. I was accidentally 
thrown into the speaking um, arena. I didn't really want to do it, but it, it just happened through my work at the time as a psychologist. I traveled and I had to give a presentation. So I really saw that I can affect people, you know, to find, to, for them to find hope and to find the strength to, to reframe their circumstances. And yes, I spoke before, but it's like the stroke gave me like a, like a rocket, you know, a rocket booster, because now I do really know that life can go just fine. You know, there's no problems. And suddenly it hits you upside down the head and sideways. And that's when you really need to find the strength to push and reframe and everything you know is out the door and i could have died i mean I, I literally could have died and that really made me believe in that second chance i've been given and not everybody is that lucky to get that second chance especially in circumstances like i encountered and i really want to make that i really i, I want to assist people to help uh, to help them find hope, how to take the first step when they encounter adversity. And I help them to find their why. Because once you know your why, why you do what you do, a purpose, then when adversity comes along, you still have that purpose. And it will the, the adversity will not dictate your life because you can focus on the purpose ahead. Thank you for sharing that. And Sabine, you are a transformational coach. What does that process look like for engaging with you? Someone's out there, they're thinking, you know what? Yes, I'm going to yes. give her a call. I'm going to Eva. I'm going to reach out. What does that Absolutely. process look like for you to work together? Absolutely. Great question. I love it. So um, you will show my information uh, to the viewers and listeners, the viewers. And they can contact me on my website, sabinebeckerspeaks.com. And there's a button they can uh, uh, free, uh, I, and I mean free, free, free discovery call so we can discover together how I can help you, how I can help find hope again, how I can help find, try, how I can help you find your purpose and your why and they contact me so in 30 minutes and then maybe we're going to work together and, and that's how they can get hope of me uh, hold of me and also there should be another link for your listeners and viewers uh, they can um i have a one minute it's one minute uh video that shows me how i do things how i get dressed how to put, how I put my makeup on and how I drive my car. And through that link, they also can contact me. And hey, it's a 30 minute free call with me. So you have nothing to lose, everything to gain and schedule with me as soon as you can. Thank you so much. And for those people who are watching, um, but they can't read or people who can't see this information, the link to go to is sabinebeckerspeaks.com slash schedule. Is that the correct one, Sabine? Yes, absolutely. That's the one uh, where my one minute promo video, but there is also a link attached to that with how they can contact me. And Excellent. my website is sabinebeckerspeaks.com. And, and what they also can do, again, free, right? Free, free. Uh, download my push survival guide. I have th this push survival guide came, I was born out of lessons, not only my disability, but also my near death experience. My stroke has taught me there's six survival tips, and that's also free. You have to go to my website, sabinebeckerspeaks.com. Really easy to download, and that's. That's my gift to you, to my to my viewers or to your viewers. And uh, just I feel like I really need to pay forward for all the wonderful things I've had in my life. 
Thank you for making it so easy for people to reach out to you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Red? I love her confidence. She's sitting there yes. and she's had, telling us an amazing story. But in between her breast, she has just a wide open smile that just kind of <laughs> melts you a little bit because it's just she's so confident in what she's doing and what she's talking about. It just it just it's amazing. I, I find it to be a very, very enjoyable the fact that you could sit there and just, you know, all this happened to me. But, you know, it's it, it did. And I learned from it. And listen, you can learn even more than I did. That's a kind of th that feeling that exudes that I'm getting from her. Yes, Thank you so I'm much, Red. You get it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm getting it too. You you have this this unique quality about you. There's no anger. I, I don't feel any anger or resentment or you know the little bit of you know what? Why did I have to? No, I don't see that or feel that at all. It's it's all just joy and gratitude yeah. that is coming yes. from you. Yes, gratitude, absolutely, and joy, because I am here, and I can make a positive impact on people. I mean, how exciting does it get, right? <laughs> exactly. what, what can you do? What can you do better with your feet today after the stroke than you could before the stroke? <laughs> that's a, that's a good question. Um, I don't think I can do anything better. I can do it the same. I can get dressed. I can. Uh, brush my hair or makeup and nothing better, but I have worked so hard to get the same amount of ability back in my left foot. And Sabine, you mentioned that uh, you have a, a fitness routine and you eat healthy. What does that all look like? Because people, as a result of the pandemic, just started going with bad habits, feeling sorry for themselves, sticking bad things into them. What is your routine? Oh my God! Do you have a half an hour more? That <laughs> <laughs> that I love, love, love that question. I'm a big believer in fitness. What um, one of the things I have decided after the stroke, and it was like I couldn't walk yet. I I could not walk, but so I, somebody on TV mentioned the Los Angeles Los Angeles Marathon. For those who don't know what a marathon is, it's 26.2 miles. And I was thinking, I'm still not able to walk. Uh, it was, I don't know, a month may, maybe after the stroke. One day, I will finish the Los Angeles marathon. So I had a really huge, lofty goal. And that some people said, you're crazy, you're crazy. You just be happy when you are able to walk. And I said, yeah, of course I'm going to be able to walk, but I'm also going to finish the Los Angeles Marathon. <laughs> so why? I, I don't know why. So after a year, after the stroke, I was able to walk. I was able to walk one mile. So little step by little step by little step, I trained with a trainer, a very inspiring person. I trained one more mile, just one more mile, and then maybe half a mile more. And in, when was it, in March of 2019, I finished the 26.2 mile marathon in Los Angeles. And just for good measure, a few months later, I did two, two half marathons in Carlsbad, um, uh, California. So I'm really a big believer in fitness. And I think that's one of the reasons why I survived because I was so fit. Uh, not overweight, no nothing, and no high blood pressure. And I really encourage people. And to this day, I'm running. Uh, I just ran yesterday five miles with my beautiful dog. And uh, I'm running constantly. I do the spinning bike, the stationary bike. So I work out four to five times a week. And, and on, not only is it physically so good for me, it's also good for your mindset. Because sometimes I'm not that enthusiastic on going out. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> because yesterday was kind of windy out here in San Diego. And I thought, oh, it's going to be so cold. But I was so happy after the five miles were over. I felt that's where my energy comes from. You would think uh, working out depletes your energy. No, it gives you energy. 
and it gives you the good kind of energy. And I am really uh, working with people to start working out because I could not even walk one mile without being completely exhausted. So it's just building your level up. And, I, and of course, I eat super healthy. I try to wean myself off sugar. Yes, uh, I do like my sugar. <laughs> I like cakes. Oh, my gosh. But I wean myself off, and I feel so much better. And I, I eat organic and practically no meat. And that's really rare. So that's in short, in short, because I don't have a half an hour to speak, <laughs> in short, what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, I feel like going on jogging right now. <laughs> Five yes. miles, marathons, good for you. That is super impressive. It, it was it. just one of my goals. I, I, you know, I'm a believer you really have to have a why. And when you have that why, those outside circumstances really do not influence you, your, your mindset that much. And at that time, my huge motivator was besides being able to walk again, one day I will finish. And I said, will, and not maybe, or well, I don't know, <laughs> I will finish the Los Angeles Marathon. What was that training like for that? Oh, well, I complained a little bit. <laughs> it was really not that hard. I trained over six months or seven months. And I added every every time I added just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And it, I mean, any I, I believe anybody can do this. Yeah, if you just do the consistent, like everything in life, what we learn, everything in life, you need to just consistently train to get better and better. And I added a few more steps every time I was out there and I went a little bit faster. I'm not a fast runner by no means i'm really on the slow side like 15 mile a minute but that's what it gets you through the marathon just consistency and very deliberate and focus on the goal yeah i i have to believe that what you've been through mentally also helped you with that training and to complete that because mm -hmm. a lot of the physical is it is what it is. You train for the physical piece of it, but the mental part of it is what's yeah. going to get you through mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I remember, and even to this day, when I feel, oh my gosh, this is really far, I what I do, and this can be applied in everything we are doing in life, I go to the next lamp post or to the next fire hydrant. If I just focus on that fire hydrant over there or the lamp post or the tree, then I, I don't worry what comes next. I just want to get there. And I think that's a lesson the stroke taught me, the, the rehabilitation from the stroke. Don't really focus on the end goal. Focus on just that one single step ahead of you. And you just make it to there and then don't worry about the rest. And that helps me in training it too. And in many things in life, like writing a book, right, right? writing a book and being on podcasts and promoting my business step by step by step baby steps by the way yeah absolutely it's all about the journey and i think people forget yeah. to enjoy that it's all, like i've got to get to that destination i've got no enjoy it while you're doing it right? absolutely and celebrate, you know, yes. when I get to that lamppost, oh my gosh, I celebrate, <laughs> woo -woo, I made it, <laughs> I made it to the lamppost. <laughs> That's what it's about, those celebrations. Red, I know you want to say something, I see you're ready to go. <laughs> well, I just, we're getting here toward the end of the show and uh, we're uh, about ready to conclude. And Sabine Becker speaks, S-A-B-I-N-E, Becker, B-E-C-K-E-R, speaks, S-P-E-A-K-S.com. Uh, could you give us maybe 30 seconds or so on, on push and why uh, people should contact you about that and what value you offer them before we uh, conclude today's show? Yeah, thank you so much for the question, Red. Uh, people really, I would like that people contact me because... I really believe when you hope, when you have hope, a positive mindset, 
and how to learn how to reframe your difficult circumstances, you can find resilience and you can you find perseverance inside of yourself. And that's the gift I feel I really can contribute to people's lives because we all get stuck, me included at times, why things cannot work. I want to help people to get unstuck and to find that hope again, to take that first step and to work on a positive mindset and to find the resilience and perseverance. And I'm very passionate about it. And I want them to discover that they too have a passion for the possible inside of them. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. And I would love, Sabine, for you to come on our business show also and talk about the business of speaking because there are so yeah. many people out there who are afraid to come forth and share their story. And yet you've come through all kinds of, of adversities <laughs> and triumphs and celebrations. And we'd love yeah. to, to honor you and have you share your story there as well. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. This was awesome. I just so enjoyed this. It's because I feel I give back. I make the second chance I have received really count. And contact me wherever you are. I'm here. And my discovery call is for free. And you have my information. Contact me so we can discover together your passion for the possible. Well, thank, thank you, you so Sweeney. very you much. My day. I really appreciate meeting you. Awesome. The same here, Jacqueline. Thank you so much, Red. We will talk. Absolutely. Later. We will. Absolutely. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope to see you again Bye. soon. Bye. 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 I just love her, Red. Thank you so much for bringing her here to the platform. Yeah, we were talking the other day, and uh, it was after that that you told me we had a, a cancellation. And I said, let me get right back to her. And, and boom, like that, she got right back to me and said, yes. And everything happened. So it was just, like I'd say, the stars align. And I love her. She's a such a, a, a true human person that just, it's just so amazing to, to come across to people like that. She and, truly uh, is a jewel. Inspirational, really absolutely. There's no doubt yes, about it. For sure. Well, thank you, my friend. We have to sign off because your show is coming up for Talking Heads. I know you told our audience a little bit about it. Before we go to that, I just want to announce that you and I are going to be doing a six-part series on our Hot Topic program about food and our emotions and how hot we get topic. all tied up. Yeah, it's very hot. And then after those six episodes, you are going to be hosting and moderating a health panel in which I'm interviewing people as we speak. So Thanks looking that. forward to that in January. That's a, a great gift for 2023 for, for your audience and for everyone. It really and truly will be. And Definitely. for those people who uh, are going to be sticking around for a few minutes, uh, USA Global TV and Radio Network, the Talking Heads presentation starts on the hour. Uh, 2 p.m. my time, which is Central, or 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, Red O'Laughlin, that's Red, R-E-D, like the color, O'Laughlin, O-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. So it's redolaughlin.com, or red at redolaughlin.com is also a good way to reach me. So, Dr. Jacqueline, I'm going to bid you adieu, and I head over to the other studio, and hopefully I will catch you there in just a few minutes, and we will continue this wonderful show today. I, Thank you very much. I'll see you in the other studio. <laughs> Bye. Bye now. And to each and every one of you who's out there, we have a special announcement. If you do follow our shows on a regular basis, I'm sure you're familiar with our show on Friday, The Power of Etiquette and Manners, in which I share this fabulous platform with Philip Sykes, who is the principal of the British School of Etiquette. And he and his team have a fabulous event that we are in partnership with. The event is coming up next week, and it is part of the Train the Trainer. Here is a promo for it. The name of the event is A Taste 
of excellence. It's a complimentary taster session where you learn about becoming an internationally certified etiquette coach. And of course, as I mentioned, Philip Sykes is the brainchild behind this. Please do join us right here, wherever it is that you're watching. This is a fabulous opportunity for you to build something for yourself and your business that you absolutely love. You can't wait to get up in the morning to do this work. And what is this work? It's becoming an internationally accredited etiquette coach and creating a business and life that you love. So please do join us again, wherever it is that you're watching from today. Here's some information. The show is on Tuesday, November 22nd. We will be live streaming. Philip will be taking questions. And the show is at 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, which is also 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So wherever you are in the world, you can watch us on our YouTube channel, USA Global TV and Radio. You can also watch it on the British School of Excellence YouTube channel. You can watch it on Facebook at the British School of Excellence, their page or our page, USA Global TV or LinkedIn. Plenty of opportunities for you to learn more about this exciting experience. All right, we will be coming right back with Talking Heads and Red Laughlin. Stay tuned. Thank you.